Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Uh, give me a couple of uh, emojis here if you guys can hear me loud and clear. Give me a couple of emojis here just so I can uh, make sure everybody can hear me before I start talking about the topic of discussion for today. Okay, so um, this is going to be a bit of a podcast and also a bit of a rant just really about the entire money system, financial markets, and how deeply our lives are truly connected to money, to the dollar. I know the title says the power of the dollar, but uh, within modern societies, what we're going to be discussing today can relate to any currency, any country, really any economy nowadays, okay? So through my pursuit of studying economics and how the world really works, especially um, really, in my opinion, as you start to learn more and more about economics, you're also going to be very interested in learning about human psychology. I think there's a natural connection there that when you're learning about, tr like if you're really passionate about trading, the financial markets, economics, and so forth, I think you're going to have a natural passion and desire to have a deeper understanding of human in psychology, the understanding of greed and where its roots really come from, or um, feelings such as uh, vengeance or anger, or when you're feeling extremely excited and, and all these different psychological impacting factors, how deeply it's connected to the dollar is absolutely insane. So for those of you who do not understand and don't really think about this on a day-to-day -day basis because it's not something that you are going to think about. The masses are so systematically programmed to avoid having a clear understanding of economics that it is absolutely mind-blowing to me. And the reason why it is mind-blowing to me is because at the end of the day, majority of everything in our life is dictated by the dollar, right? And from a psychological standpoint, when you look at the general masses, especially when I'm just giving an example of my own family and my upbringing, like I've, I've seen my family members, my mom, dad, working like factory jobs, really working extremely hard for this dollar. And I just want people to really feel that. If you have other family members, your mom, your dad, your brother, sister, cousins, that are working extremely difficult labor intensive jobs or very intense jobs and they slave away for minimum wage all to be able to put food on the table, put a shelter over their head, have clothes to put on their body and have all these basic necessities of survival. So what you can take away is that within the modern societies, yes, we have access to all these resources. Yes, we have access to all of these luxuries and opportunities, but at the same time, we are naturally born into this game and system where our modern day survival or our modern day quality of life is directly linked to the dollar. It's linked to how much money you have, right? Or how much money you are bringing in. It's going to directly impact your survival rate and your quality of life that's very easy to understand and that's very easy for all of us to grasp and it's very easy for the majority of us to have that personal connection and understand all of our family members that have worked extremely difficult us who have worked jobs and slaved away for this dollar so I just want all of us to grasp the psychological connection of our lives our mentality our whole upbringing literally being directly linked to money. And now this is going to seem like a sick joke, but at the end of the day, not many people ask or wonder, well, where does this money come from? What is it dictated by? Who controls it, right? So most of you will know how you've been following me. You watch the Capital Hungry YouTube webinars. I'm always talking about central banking, economics, and so forth. And as crazy as it is, at the end of the day, the global money system 
is nothing but a system based on trust. Global currencies, for the majority of part, especially for major players, like if you're looking at the USA and America, right? The currency itself doesn't really have any value. It's not actually essentially backed by anything. It's not backed by a physical resource or asset such as gold. Uh, and it's not valued in relation to anything. It is literally based on a trust system and is dictated. The supply, the value, the interest rate is dictated by the government and the governing body working in hand with the central bank, the Federal Reserve, right? It's literally Fugazi. It's Fugazi. It doesn't exist. It's digits on a screen. It's just numbers in a system. We saw this during the pandemic when obviously we can understand Every 10 to 15 years, there's an economic crisis. This economic crisis, whether it's triggered for a financial reason, such as the GFC, the global financial crisis of 2008, such as if it's something like a technical technological reason, like the Y2K scare of 2000 and the correction that had on the stock markets, or if it was something very severe in terms of the financial impact, such as the pandemic, <clears throat> but the lockdowns that actually led to economic activity being stagnant. All of these various economic crises really just lead to opportunity for the ultra rich and elite, right? And every single time we, there is this economic crisis, the central banks and the government increase the money supply just, just like that with a snap of a finger, what everybody likes to call in our industry, the money printer, turning on the money printer. But in the modern days, there's no, there's no real actual money printer. It's just digits on a screen in a system. It's just increasing the money supply. We saw that uh, we saw that at an exponential rate during the pandemic and crash period, right? The Federal Reserve and the government working hand in hand exponentially increased the US money supply and printed out 50% of all US dollars within history <clears throat> within the entire history of the U.S. existence, 50% of all dollars in circulation were increased or printed out within that two-year period, primarily starting March 2020, right? So what this does is it increases the money supply and the Federal Reserve and government takes this money supply and what do they do with it? Well, in the mainstream media, what they're going to tell the people in the public is, hey, this is for all of you. This is stimulus checks for all of you. You all just lost your jobs, even though the majority of crisis that happened through history are man-made. It has the same financial market impact. It has the same impact of the sacrifice of the masses and the sacrifice of their jobs, their livelihood, their money to benefit the ultra-rich and elite. And I'm going to explain that further. Right. So the central bank, when the pandemic happened, goes, hey, you all just lost your job. So we're going to help you out with like with the government. We're going to help you out. We're going to give you these stimulus checks. But with an example of the U.S., the U.S. only did two one trillion dollar stimulus packages, which is roughly two trillion dollars and not. All of that actually went to the citizens to help them and give them the support they needed. The majority of people lost jobs, small businesses were shut down and so forth. And the reality is they actually printed or increased the money supply by a minimum of 20 trillion. Okay. So where's that other 15 to 18 trillion dollars? Where did it all go? Well, when the central bank increases that money supply, they start to allocate that capital and they use it themselves through their asset purchase program. And they're pumping up the stock market from the lows and they're handing out credit and allocating that capital to the banks and institutions down the line, the Black Rocks, the Vanguards, the JP Morgans and so forth. Right. They're buying all these asset classes like real estate up by the streets while wow, these huge asset management funds like vanguard and blackrock buying up homes so um <clears throat> and that's something that might be for a different podcast the theory of uh how in america and especially in north america they are 
now buying up all of the homes themselves, the corporations and the banks, because they understand with the increase in inflation that we've had over the years, that the regular day-to-day -day person can no longer afford a home. So the majority of banks and institutions back in the day used to make a lot of money on mortgages, as back in the day, the average person could work a regular job and be able to afford a home and afford a mortgage. You could have two people working in a factory and they'd be able to afford a mortgage they'd be locked into that mortgage for potentially 20 years and obviously paying interest as it goes up but that's how banks would have so much locked in capital and income coming in from millions and millions of people having the mortgages but what we've seen with inflation increase over the years with the massive increases in money supply is that the real estate market has gone exponentially up in value right? It's gone up to the point where the regular person, especially people who are just coming out of college, getting a job, wanting to start a family, can no longer actually afford a, a single family home. They're going to have to, they're going to have to go somewhere else, downsize, right? So what the banks are doing now, what the corporations are doing now, since mortgages are really becoming obsolete, is they're buying up the homes themselves. They're having those assets under their management and they're just renting it out. They're going to force everybody to rent everybody will own nothing and they will be forced to be happy but that's for a podcast for another time anyways so back to the topic the feds exponentially increase the money supply only two trillion goes to the u.s citizen through the trillion dollar stimulus packages it happened twice right what about the other 18 trillion well that went and back into the stock markets that went into commodities and asset classes such as oil where oil went from minus 40 dollars a barrel crude oil futures now it's at a hundred dollars a barrel Stock market like US 30 Dow Jones went from 18,000 crash point in March 2020. Now, it, now at the all time highs, it peaked like 37,000. Gold through the last two years ran from like $1,200 an ounce all the way up to $2,000 an ounce. Real estate markets in North America, if it, there's probably some real estate agents in here, you know, house prices have been going up through the roof. That's because of the increase in money supply that leads to inflation. Inflation inflates the price of everything within an economy so everything goes up within an economy cost of living regular day-to-day -day goods and all these various asset classes but guess what that benefits the ultra rich and wealthy but fucks up the middle class and working class right because when you when you increase the money supply it's just the economic impact that it's going to lead to inflation it's pretty much like one plus one equals two it's just the economic equation behind it right <clears throat> so this inflation benefits the rich because the definition of inflation is simply as states it's nothing that complicated it inflates the price of everything within an economy everything from your basket of goods such as people's day-to-day -day, gas milk eggs meats groceries all the way up to house prices stock prices and oil and everything down the line right we've seen that over the next two years or over the last two years well the ultra rich and elite the people who run the world the people who run these huge funds like blackrock vanguard at these major banks these major corporations and big pharma and the entertainment and media and education and banking and so forth their the majority of their wealth is housed in these asset classes it's in the stock market right it's in it's in commodities or precious metals like gold oil it's in real estate land they're not really holding that much free cash who's dealing the most with free cash it's the middle class it's the working class who's working a job getting paid a paycheck what inflation does is also devalue the currency right so think about this you have the central bank and government who can dictate the supply of money at a whim they can print it and increase it out of thin air it's not backed by anything it's not valued by anything the the people the working class the engine of the economy have no say in it the same people who absolutely slave away blood sweat and tears for this dollar just to put food on the table the people who control it can just increase it like that right think about this they can increase it and the reason for it is a crisis oh wow 
every 10 to 15 years, there's conveniently a crisis that has the same impact on the markets and leads to the same the same crash in the stock markets and huge recovery and increase in generational wealth, right? So when they increase that money supply, I just want to imprint this in everybody's head. That leads to an inflation and the cost of prices in the economy going up, but also a devaluation of the currency. In the short term, the, the buying power of the dollar goes down. This is perfectly fine and a perfect sacrifice for the ultra rich because, again, the majority of their wealth is housed in these asset classes. They're not the majority of actual ultra rich elite and wealthy. They're not holding free cash. Their wealth is accumulated. It's calculated and it's further generated in these asset classes, land, property, stock market, gold, commodities, right? With inflation, all of that goes up in price. So what does that mean for their wealth? It's just going to go up, right? But for inflation, for the middle class and working class, everything that they spend their money on is consumable. The majority of money that the working class receives from their paychecks does not go into investing into an asset class or holding it within an asset class. It goes into consumption, cost of living, your groceries, your gas, your rent, your internet, your phone bill, all of these different items and, cons and consumables that also are increasing in price. So the working class is just paying more for the same product, same services, and same goods, all thanks to the increase in money supply, all thanks to inflation, and the buying power of the dollar in their pocket is even less, this, this sacrifice, this loss of the working class and the middle class as a collective is for the benefit of the ultra-rich and elite. This is the power of the dollar. This is how money is used as a tool of enslavement. Because at the end of the day, the working class and the middle class, the engine of the economy, have no choice but to still work for the dollar. Because remember, their modern day survival is linked to money. They cannot put food on the table without that money. They can't go. You have to go pay to go through college or university. Then you're working to get a good job just to make more money to pay your cost of living, pay your bills and so forth. Right. Before I continue, any emojis, if that's making sense to everybody. Just going to get a bit of water here, too. <clears throat> Is that making sense to everybody? Any emojis here? Because there's no chat. <clears throat> okay so now think about this from a psychological aspect right your mom your dad your brother your sister working extremely hard for this dollar going to school studying extremely hard having sleepless nights stressing over exams stressing over tests like not being able to eat properly or having to watch what they eat based on their budget or what they can spend on everything every decision every choice every single path we follow in price comes from a root connection to the dollar does it not is that not absolutely insane, right? Most likely your path of education, most likely the job you're going to work, most likely where you're going to live, the quality of your life, how you're going to live, who you're going to live with, what you're going to experience and do in your life. At the end of the day, whether you like it or not, it is linked to this money system. And at the end of the day, the psychological concept on the flip side of the one percent in the few who control and dictate these money systems and the industries down the line they have all the power their perspective and perception of reality is a complete different view from ours 
They're the ones running the game. They're the ones who created the rules of the game, who dictate this money system, who dictate the jobs, the interest rates, the mortgage rates, your credit card loans, your credit card debt, the student loan prices, tuition prices, prices of cost of goods, cost of living, your rent, your houses, every single fucking thing. Right? And I was just recently sharing on my Twitter feed about just giving a more realistic, uh, just giving a more uh, realistic experience to these concepts. Because a lot of people, when they hear me talk about this, like, oh, the one percent, the ultra rich and elite, the market makers. But who who is this? Who are they? Like, is it the Illuminati? Are they secret? No, it's not a secret. It's not a secret. It's the politicians running these countries, right? The ones that you're hearing about insider trading, benefiting off the crisis. And it's not just, and the ones you're hearing in the media, they're just the ones taking the media hit. There's thousands of others doing the exact same thing, right? It's these huge asset management funds, the vanguards, the Black Rocks, who own majority percentage shareholder ownership in Apple, Google, Microsoft, big media, big pharma, and so forth. It's the people running the central banks, the ultra-rich, wealthy families behind these major industries, such as big oil, the Saudis. It's not, it's not just like a brown table of a secret group of people. It's very out in the open who is holding this mass amounts of wealth, right? It's just that the masses are so systematically programmed to be indulged in pleasure to be indulged in satisfaction to be trapped and hypnotized in this mental prison trapped in this enslavement by the dollar this money system that they don't venture off into learning about these concepts into learning about how the world really works right so just another example diving into it a bit deeper when you're looking at when you're looking at the modern society, and I always talk about this, the modern society, at the end of the day, we know that people do have to work regardless. There isn't a universal basic income system yet. Most people are working jobs and dead-end jobs that they hate, and they get trapped in this vicious cycle and system of earning just enough to make it living paycheck to paycheck and i'm just talking about generalizations these are this is uh, this is uh based on statistical data specifically of the u.s economy based on household debt of the u.s economy the average income of a worker within the u.s economy their average expenses and so forth savings you can go research all this information and double check fact check everything i'm saying here Fact check everything I'm saying about how much the Federal Reserve printed, what they did with their asset purchase program. Fact check everything about the ownership of BlackRock, Vanguard, and these various corporations. Fact check everything I'm saying in here. Make sure you listen again and go research it yourself. I encourage you to fact check Google everything I say in here, okay? About the value of money, how it's dictated, how it's all fugazi, all of that. Just go, just go research it yourself, okay? But anyways... So what is promoted in modern society through all of this various stimuli around us, such as big media, through our governments, politicians, and leaders, is to really be absolutely dependent on the government and these various systems in play, right? Whether it's the current financial system, which you're obviously enslaved by and you have this direct connection to, whether it's all this social media and big media programming, right? Everything nowadays is constantly pushing people towards instant gratification and pleasure. And what this is doing is fueling the pockets and making the rich even richer. The more the masses continue to work and be good working ants and hamsters on the wheel, and with the little bit of money they have afterwards, they continue to just put it back into the same pockets of the people they're working for, the richer and richer the ultra elite will get, and the wider and wider the gap between rich and poor will get. Because think about this. Let's look at an example of 
something like Vanguard, okay? Vanguard is an asset management fund who uh, manages $7 trillion, And I think BlackRock manages like $9 trillion. Not million, not billion, $7 trillion worth of assets are managed under their fund, right? They are majority shareholders in major corporations and companies that people are using their products and services Every single day, every single hour, Microsoft, Apple, like the list goes on and on, Google itself, right? So they have huge ownership in these companies. They can dictate the agenda and narrative of these companies. What they're doing is promoting further consumerism. So when the user, when the customer, when the person is constantly using these Apple products or Google services or Microsoft services or whatever or whatever other companies that they have majority shareholding in, like big media companies like New York Times, big food companies, big pharma like Pfizer, they're a majority shareholder in that. The list goes on and on. And this is all public information. Again, you can go and check your yourself right when they have majority shareholder in this company and ownership alongside with the company itself also being on a pursuit of power further profit being fueled by a never-ending supply of human greed the human greed factor will never that starvation of human greed will never be satisfied right it never stops it will never end it's never enough that is something we've seen throughout history. That's also been the downfall of a lot of great conquerors through history is a constant chase of further greed and power eventually becomes their own inevitable downfall as well. But anyways, as they're working together with these companies, they get to choose the agenda, the whole purpose and design of what these companies are looking to achieve, which at the end of the day, we all know is profit. So the more you continue to work and then mindlessly consume, the further the stock prices of these companies go up, the further the profits of these companies go up, the further the value of these companies go up, the further the increase of power goes up for all these major funds like uh, Vanguard, BlackRock, the central bankers, these major banks and institutions, right? At the end of the day, the narrative and agenda in big pharma, in media, in the education system, is all linked back to the financial markets and some of these major asset management funds. So from a psychological standpoint, what does that tell you the primary goal of every single one of these industries is going to be? You would think the education system, the number one goal of the education system should be to teach, to provide knowledge, to provide education, especially for a potential uh, affordable price, to give education to all and increase higher learning and so forth, right? But it's not. The number one goal of the education system is profit. Why do you think student loans, why do you think tuition costs so much? Why do you think so many people come out of university and college with mass amounts of debt? It's on purpose. It's not a mistake, right? You would think the primary goal of the big food industry is to provide proper nutrition and nourishment for human beings. At the end of the day, when you really look at the concept and core, core purpose of food is to provide nourishment and fuel for our working bodies. We are machines. We need to have an efficient amount of fuel and nutrients to have our mind and body working productively and effectively, right? But that's not what's promoted in the big food industry. What's promoted is profit. That's why you have what's constantly sold is what's cheap, sugars, refined goods, right? Constantly processed foods and so forth. Big Pharma, the primary goal of Big Pharma should be to heal, should be to try to prevent, control, or cure, cure diseases and illnesses, right? But we know that's not the goal. Big Pharma's number one goal is profit. So we're seeing a common, common theme here, the common denominator across industries, the common denominator across all these various 
connections to our life, whether it's education, the food system, the healthcare system and big pharma, the financial system, it's all interconnected and roots back to the dollar and roots back to the financial system at its core. Right? So this whole phenomena and, and man-made creation of the money system is extremely, extremely fascinating to me. It's so interesting because we're now seeing the acceleration of the enslavement of the people by the dollar at a huge, huge rate during the pandemic period. Right. We saw the rich get absolutely richer across the board and we saw the poor and the middle class get hammered down again, lose their jobs, lose their livelihood. Small businesses shut down, increase in inflation, decrease in the buying power, huge amounts of hysteria, huge amounts of panic and fear with the lockdowns and the pandemic bullshit. Now the war catalyst and this uh, bringing in some more volatility into the markets. It's never going to end. Right. But at the end of the day, this system, this game is not going to change. There's not going to be some miracle awakening of the masses. There's not going to be some miracle hero to come and wake everybody up and say, all right, now we've got to change. we got to change this, right? It's not going to happen. The reason why I'm saying that is history proves that. History proves that civilizations through history have always had hierarchies of power have always had a small percent of the population within the civilization control the decisions resources and livelihood of the majority of the population whether you're looking at ancient times of emperors and pharaohs and kings and queens whether you're looking at modern times of ceos and presidents and government leaders and prime ministers what's the difference the the pursuit of power the human greed the human nature behind it the essence is the same the only thing different nowadays is the innovations in technology and how societies are obviously way more modernized compared to the ancient times but at the core when you're really looking at the core concepts it's exactly the same right so what I'm also trying to communicate here is I don't want everybody to just see this as doom and gloom. Oh man, like we're fucked. Like we're just going to keep slaving away for this dollar and I'm just going to keep consuming shit. And I'm just going to make the rich even richer. Like there's nothing we can do about this. No, that's completely false. Yes, we are at a, dis at a disadvantage as the masses. Yes, there's a lot more challenges and hurdles in our way. But at the end of the day, that's life. And at the end of the day, going through those challenges, going through those hurdles, going through those difficult times on the pursuit of self-development, on the pursuit of more power to increase the quality of our life and increase the quality of our life of the our loved ones around us, our friends and family, at the end of the day, it is worth it, right? So yes, it's we're at a disadvantage, Yes, it's going to be an extremely difficult path. Yes, the majority will fail, even if they give a maximum effort. But it's much more worth it to at least try than forever live your life enslaved to the dollar and forever live your life living this clueless and living this ignorant to how the world really works and just being nothing but a worker and a consumer. So the number one step is to educate yourself. And the beauty is, look what I'm doing right now. I'm talking to dozens of people across countries, across the world, thanks to this supercomputer in my hand. We have to understand and be in touch with reality and understand we have access to any piece of information that we want, right? We can choose we can make the decision and choice within our modern societies how we actively use our time. I highly urge anybody on the pursuit of power or the pursuit of increasing the quality of your life in this modern society, start studying economics, start studying human psychology. Also start studying the power through history. 
various conquerors, civil, successful civilizations, the cycles, the economic cycles, the power cycles that they go through. Okay? You're going to see very common patterns. You're going to see, and as you dive deeper and deeper into it, the, re the harsh, cold realities of the world. But this is going to open your mind to more opportunities. This is going to open your mind to actually understanding the rules of this game we are born into and how you can learn to navigate the rule, how you can learn to navigate this vicious, corrupt game, but increase the quality of your life physically, mentally, financially, and spiritually. Okay. For more information on that, I do have tons of webinars, self development webinars on the Capital Hungry YouTube page, tons of fundamental and economic webinars on the YouTube page as well. But at the end of the day, that's what I want everybody to understand and take away from this webinar it is it is a crazy psychological connection that we the masses have to the money system and the dollar and it's absolutely mind-blowing how it's out of thin air it's fugazi it's fugazi it's just a trust-based system dictated by the few that control the resources livelihood and decisions of the many and this is a common repeating pattern throughout history so i hope everybody has enjoyed that and really learned the true power of the dollar from both ends of the coin from our perspective and also the perspective of how it's a tool of enslavement for the ultra rich and elite and also a tool that just validates their power their control further and further and further so I don't want to make these too long, you know what I mean? I don't like to ramble on too long. I like to make it so everybody can re-listen to this. But if you guys enjoyed this, send an emoji. It's it's going to be saved. You can always re-listen to it. If you guys want me to do rants like this about economies or about current events or about fundamentals or economics more often, I can do that no problem. Just send me a message. I love having discussions and doing rants and stuff like this. But I will be ending this soon. So if you guys enjoyed this, uh, just make sure to share it around. And I'll see you all next time. Okay, everybody, take care.